Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and as always, I am delighted to be with you on another Tuesday. I hope your weekend went well. If you're in the States and you celebrated Labor Day, I hope you had a good long weekend. Um, we actually, I knew it was Labor Day, uh, but we kept forgetting it was Labor Day, so... Just one of those things where you live elsewhere and they don't have the same set of holidays, so not a big deal. It was just a regular Monday for us. Weekend was uh, a little frustrating. More sickness on the part of my husband, unfortunately. It was not as... In some ways it was worse and in some ways it wasn't as bad as last weekend, but it's still very concerning. So we're still trying to get to the bottom of why he keeps having these issues. And I'm hoping that it's going to stop because he obviously feels just absolutely horrible physically. And um, I just feel horrible for him. I can't do anything to help him and besides just kind of comforting him through it. So we're hoping to get some answers. At any rate... He's feeling better now, so let's hope that that continues. I'm, I'm praying that that positive trend continues. So that was pretty much our weekend. Not quiet, but uh, not terribly exciting either. So, But now here we are in September, and of course I have an author interview for you today. I am speaking today with author DC Gomez about the second book in, um, it's, the second book in a trilogy, but this trilogy takes place in uh, a larger urban fantasy world. The book is called The Traitor. It is part of the Assassins, sorry, yeah, the Orders, the Orders Assassins series. This is, as I said, the second book. Uh, let me go ahead and give you the description of this one. Witches, demons, and shifters are all landing in Salem, but who do you trust? Eric's search for Raphael, the Order's betrayer, is leading to a dead end. Running out of time, he decides to enlist the help of some old acquaintances in Salem's underground. In the meantime, the Garcia clan, the deadliest of all the shifter assassin families in the world, has been attacked. Tensions are rising as Sasha is forced back on the field to investigate and bring the culprit to justice. With both the Order of Witches and the Garcia clan searching for the truth, Eric and Sasha are the only ones standing between a full-on bloodbath. So as I said, this is the second in the Order Order's Assassin trilogy. Turns out it's going to be a trilogy. The third one will be out sometime this year. Um, but it's also, as I said, part of a larger world. Um, there's a series of books about Reapers. Let me give you the title of that series as well in case you're in. Yes, I'm glad I double-checked that because I'm, I have Reapers in my head because there are Reapers as characters, but the, the series, there's a series, The Intern Diaries. There's five in that series, and that takes place in this world, and so you're introduced to characters in that, some of whom make an appearance in this trilogy. But if you are a fan of urban fantasy, that's great because you've already got The Intern Diaries, which is complete. There are five books in that series. You've got two out of three of The Order's Assassins books out, and the third one should be out this year, so you you could potentially have eight books in a new world to read if you are a fan of urban fantasy. I love that. I love when I get um, a whole or almost whole series to jump into and I don't have to wait. Um, but this is, as I said, the second. I read it as a standalone. I've not read any of DC's books before this. I I knew that there was a much bigger world. You can tell that there's a lot more going on and um, that there was stuff missing from the first book, but I was able to read it as a standalone, okay, I think I would prefer to start at the beginning with book one and then read book two, but I was able to follow along, okay, there's enough backstory, but um, because of the characters, I think I would want, I 
will go back and read that first book also when I have time someday, um, just to clarify a few things. So, but I would suggest starting with book one rather than book two, unless for some reason book two falls in your lap or you, you know, are interviewing the author for a podcast or something along those lines. At any rate, speaking of interviewing the author for a podcast, let's go ahead and turn to the interview with DC. Again, the book is called The Traitor. It is book two in the Order's Assassin, and the author is DC Gomez. Hi, DC. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk to you about not just um, this book, The Traitor, but uh, the world that it is set in. Before we do that, though, if you would just take a moment to share a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you, that would be wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, everyone. I am a USA Today bestselling author and award winner. I write in multiple genres, everything from urban fantasy to devotionals, even children's book. I'm a podcaster. And I think I tell everyone above all, I'm a dreamer. I'm a believer that people should follow their dreams and do the best that they can to just to be happy and to live in the moment. So I am excited to be here and just share with you and just talk to your listeners. Wonderful. Well, I'm excited to have you here. Um, the book that I was sent to talk to about today is the second in what sounds like a trilogy. Um, but if I am, if I did my little bit of research correctly, it looks like it's, um, a book that's part of a, a, a bigger set of books, not necessarily a series, but like um, maybe a couple of series in the same world. The Traitor and the Order of the Order's Assassin is part of the universe that I'm calling the Reaper's World. So this takes place in modern day. So this is urban fantasy takes place in Texas. At least that beginning series took place in Texas. This one goes a little bit from, I want to say New York City to Salem to everything in between. So it still takes them to the U.S. So, yeah, so this is one of our main characters in or side characters, more more or less, in the Intern Diary series that has spent off. So that series has concluded and Eric has now found himself getting ready to start his new adventures. And he wants to do the best that he can for his people, if that makes any sense. Sure. Yeah. So Eric is um, a a character, kind of a spinoff character. Uh, If that makes sense to people. Um, can you can you talk about the inspiration for this trilogy then? Let me give you a little bit short version for everybody without spoiling anything. It's a combination of things. For all of us who make amazing promises to our loved ones, you might understand. So I had told my mother, this is how bad it goes, a couple of years ago that I was going to have a series and a book that took place in Salem, Massachusetts. I grew up in Salem. My family's still there. And my mom's like, yes, that would be amazing. Fast forward a couple of years and she goes, oh, where is that book? And I was like, oh, you're serious. Like, we, we have a book to continue. And I always wanted to do an assassin series. I'm in love with James Bond. I wanted to do something of that nature. And I couldn't figure out exactly what to place. So when I had the opportunity to go back and do some brainstorming, so where do I want to take my characters? Where do I want to take this family that I have been spending so many times with? It just kind of clicked to have Eric continue the adventures. We had a trader going crazy all over the world. And I wanted to explore the fact of why, what made this trader. So Eric is on this mission to find it. The exciting thing about it is that it's becoming a more of a dual POV. I got Eric and I also have Sasha who happens to be a shifter. And the things that they have in common is they both hate being assassins. So this is where you're meeting them. And book two is kind of the continuation of their first meeting. And now they're both in Salem not liking what they're doing and trying to figure out what mess they got into. Yeah. And uh, this, as you read it, because this is the first of your books that I have read. Um, it, but as I was reading it, I could tell that it was part of a bigger story, but um, I wouldn't say it, you, should, you should read it as a standalone, but you can, <laughs> but you can tell that it's part of a bigger story and that uh, I would like to go back and then kind of catch up with the, with people. But um can you give an overview of the trader of this second book? Absolutely. For anybody who's curious, if you wanted to know where to start this one without having to commit to the other series, if you pick up Hitman, it's a short novella, it will introduce you to these two characters. So you have a little bit better sense of where to pick up the story. But the trader, we have met them in the Hitman. We met Eric, we met Sasha. We both know, we understand a little bit that they're both assassins. They're very good at what they do. They're just very much not happy with it. They would like to be doing something better. They were very honorable. 
And one of the things for this series is it's all very dark humor. So you have to kind of go with the fact you're going to meet some quirky characters and a lot of zany adventures and just fun adventures and they'll make you laugh. So it's okay to laugh in this series. The trader is that place where they all kind of think they know what's going on. Like they started the series like, okay, we know who did this. We know what's going on. And the world gets turned around. They're in Salem. There's people joining this entire mess. There's a betrayal in the clan of assassins. Eric thought he knew what's going on. And it's just throwing another mystery piece. And at this point in time, he's like, who do you trust? You know, if you think you know all the pieces and the rug gets pulled under you, where are you at in this adventure? This is that story. So for anybody who enjoys a little mystery and a little madness, this is where my poor guys are at. It's time for our first break of the episode, but uh, if you remember at the beginning of the episode, I was saying that this is the second. You can read it as a standalone if you want to, but I would start with the first one because this really is that pivotal point in the book where things are starting to come together, but there's still a lot of loose ends to wrap up. There's still some things that are left hanging. Um, it's kind of, it's not exactly a cliffhanger, but you know, it's that, that feeling of this is things are happening and we have to figure things out. So it's definitely that that pivotal turning point. Remember that because uh, we're picking up there when we come back from the break. In the meantime, you are listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author DC Gomez. We are in her Orders Assassins series, which is part of a bigger urban fantasy world. Let's go ahead and return to that interview. And as I mentioned before the break, we're talking about this being book two, kind of that pivotal turning point in a trilogy. So let's return it to the interview. Yes, it's uh, it's that turning point in a, in a series that we always get to where the you know you think you're still you're getting things figured out and then toward the end of the book no not so much no everything kind of gets flipped on its head right and it's the fun part about the story is that you kind of follow their adventures and you feel their pains and suffering you're cheering for them but at the same time you're going this is not going to end up well for anyone like how do we get in this mess <laughs> and you feel bad you're like oh this is going to be bad. Are you one of those authors who really likes to put your characters in situations and see how they get out of them? I always say that I'm not. And then people like, yeah, you are. Let's be honest. Like, I'm not going out of my way to torture my characters and make them suffer. That's not my intent. I'm always the one that says, what if this could happen? And then you're wondering, how did you get there? Because let's be honest, some of the things I write is not my fault. They did it to themselves because I did not put them in those situations. I'm like... You walked into that one. I was trying to keep you safe and happy, and you just went off the deep end. <laughs> so it, it's their fault. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm completely innocent right now. <laughs> I'm just happy. I believe fault. you. I believe you. <laughs> I'm glad somebody um, does. <laughs> the story is told um, alternating chapters between Sasha's and Eric's points of view. Can you talk a little bit more about them as main characters and what might resonate for readers with those two? This is the first time that I had tackled a book from that perspective. It's kind of the fact that you have Sasha, who is in her 20s, grew up in a family that is literally dedicated to the assassin. There's a tradition, there's honor, they're bound. And this girl is a klutz. She's smart, she's beautiful, she's talented. And then her senses kicked in. It's like, why do I do this? Like, why am I, you know, going to be attacking these people that haven't done anything? And yet when she gets mad, she still understands the concept. So you have Sasha as this heroine, and now her true mission in terms of who she is as a member of her clan has been challenged. And you get to figure it out that as much as she does not like this concept of being an assassin, she's willing to do whatever it takes for her family. And that's kind of the bottom line for her. Eric, on the other hand, is a very complicated character. And I joke with a lot of my readers 
when he was in the intern diaries, I knew very little about this man. He was a little bit of player. He was handsome. He was hardworking. He's a witch. He does all these things. But the side of him, of this brooding character, this guy who is just truly a romantic and puts this facade for people not to know who he is, and he keeps people at a distance, kind of came out during this book. Like this series is the one that is all about him and finding the deeper side of them. I always thought as a writer, you have a piece of you and your characters. And I thought I was going to relate to Sasha. And I found myself relating so much more to Eric and understanding that what people see is not always who we are and still trying to give them the best. And when you're writing characters, um, do you have a really good sense of those characters before you start writing? Or do you, you like to have the character evolve as you write? Or is it a combination for you? Usually at the beginning, I might have a name and an idea. Like I might have a gender, age, time frames of who this person is. Who they are really gets developed and evolved in the pages. I, I feel like the readers and I meet these people as we know. It's like going on a date with a new friend. I meet them on the page. And usually I'm just as surprised as the people who are reading these books. I'm like, I have no idea. I didn't see that coming. Like, why are you doing that? Like, you should not have done that. So I'm very much into letting the characters become who they are as we grow in the story. And sometimes I question them. I have no issues in reading them. Question some of my people. Sure. Um, makes sense. Do you have characters that you had intended to just be kind of minor side characters that have taken on larger roles throughout the, the different series? I have a couple that literally, in my mind, were fillers. I think one of my favorite ones is Shorty. He is one of the characters that you get to hear him mention. And even Constantine, who happened to be the talking cat. It's one of those, oh, they needed somebody to talk to in this scene. And lo and behold, five books later, like they're major characters and people know who they are. And people are like, what are they doing now? And I'm like, how does this happen? And it's kind of what happens to us, I think, in real life is the fact that we meet people as we go by our days and before you know you're like best friends with somebody like how like I was just saying hi to you <laughs> no I the the character had other ideas one of the things I liked about this story was as much as I like both Eric and Sasha I really liked some of those characters that you can tell they have bigger stories in other books but um like Constantine and Bartholomew Duke are a few that they're just you, you mentioned dark humor and all three of those I think embody that well and they have no issues telling you what they think and how it's supposed to be. And they ground our characters so much more realistic. I have hard times with people or characters who were too good to be true or too bad to be, you know, believable. So I want them to have those shades and those side characters, you know, their they're friends and families that are going to bring them to reality. You're going to be like, somebody needed to call you in that. You shouldn't have done that. Don't do it again. Yes. I, I have to tell you, um, I somehow, I, I got... I was, I got your book mixed up with another book, um, from the same publicist, Mickey, and on the list that he sent me. And beca- I think it was because this one's called The Traitor and that one was called, um, Enigma Tracer and the T's got mixed up in my head. Anyway, I started reading your book and I read about three chapters before I realized I was two months early on, on the, on the interview schedule. So I went and started reading Enigma Tracer, which is, um, techno thriller. But because I'd been reading urban fantasy with Eric and Sasha, I kept trying to force the characters in Enigma Tracer to, into urban fantasy. <laughs> I kept trying to figure out, are they psychic? Are they witches? Are they what are they? And it took me forever for my brain to actually um realize that I was trying to make these characters fit into the roles of Eric and Sasha in your book. So um I, a couple months ago, I was very, very confused about what I was reading, but it made me laugh. I'm glad it has such an impression that you're trying to convert other genres to urban fantasy. <laughs> I think everybody needs to start reading and writing urban fantasy because there's something really fun about adding magic to the real world and giving you that twist. Because then you start looking at everything like, mm, that could happen. I don't know, but it could be a possibility. It makes things a little bit more exciting. Exactly. I love um, urban fantasy for just that reason, because it can be, you know, just a regular street somewhere. And then you start thinking, what might happen down that alleyway? Exactly. And it's so much fun. I'm sure. Is that you think what draws you to writing in this genre is just the, the idea of what if? I love it. And that's one of the biggest possibilities Because while you still have the regular world, I still have a world that you can create. There's still all these things you can add. 
behind the scenes that people go, mm. so it gives you those extra layers while still making people feel very comfortable. You know, that's a place you can go on Google Maps and research and be like, oh, yeah, there's a coffee shop right there. I know where that is. And then wonder what goes behind that third door in the coffee shop that you can't see from the, you know, the front of the room and gives you those essence. And a lot of the things with this book, The Safe Space in Salem, you get to go to these real locations in Salem because I have people say, oh my God, I want to check that coffee shop out. I like, that's great. Just don't ask to go to the basement. I don't know if they have a basement. I've never been there. They're like, what? So you get to add those layers of things that sometimes gives you that extra imagination, a kick without trying to be like, I don't know if they have a basement. I only go to the front of the shop. I'm just a visitor. So have fun with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when it comes to that kind of world building, how do you, do you have a, a system that you keep track of, you know, the, the places that you've created or, um, yeah, I guess the, the places in the, the, the worlds that you've created. I do. I have a rule when it comes to my worlds is all my urban fantasy needs to be taking place in the same universe. So everything has to be within the reaper context. So every book is going to have a mention, probably Constantine or death just to keep the magical elements the same. I'm very much aware that anytime you introduce magic to something, you have to explain the rules of that magical world. So if you keep it within the same world, when people pick up another book in that series or another book in the urban fantasy, they're not going, oh my God, why did the vampires do this and not that? So I try to be consistent with that. I also try to be consistent where I send my characters. So I try to send them to different locations just because I think it's exciting for people to know. So my worlds tend to cross all over the U.S. Since she's in North America, I've been going to Mexico here and there. So yes, it's really fun. I love it. It sounds like fun. On that note, we are going to take our second break of this episode. When we come back, what kinds of uh, research does one need to do to write urban fantasy? You will find out. In the meantime, stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author D.C. Gomez. In terms of research, do you do any particular types of research for your urban fantasies? I do a combination of location research. Anytime that I'm able to, I would travel to those locations. Or I spend a lot of time in Google Earth to make sure that I know the locations and how it's laid out. So I spend a lot of time in that. I enjoy also learning and figuring it out depending on my characters like weapons i do a lot of gun research i'm sure the fbi is checking my web browsers because it goes from how do you kill this with this poison to what is the best ammo to use in this gun so i think every writer has that list of things that we use in terms of like if you're doing anything in the normal world as i call it you have to at least get some of those facts correct so i spend a lot of time checking what i'm claiming that i'm doing Sure. That makes sense. I think I, not that I would ever be an FBI agent or nor would I do this, but I, I like to think how much fun it would be if I were an FBI agent, I would just start looking up author's browser histories. <laughs> Wouldn't that be exciting? Imagine like all the famous one really looking at what some of the things are like, oh, I know exactly where that book is coming from. I know exactly why you added that. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> exactly. Not legal or ethical, but fun. <laughs> Um, it would be more like 
did the research ever stop being for a book? Like you do random research that is not in any book, then panic. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, what can you say about the third book for this series? This one is the one that my editor is going, when am I getting it? Because we need to get to the end. I'm all about huge action scenes for anybody who's following my series. So the conclusion always is going to give you that huge payoff. This is the one that all the traders finally come to the table, I want to say, and everybody has to pick a side and to some extent. So I'm excited to bring this one to light and have that resolution in terms of you've been following these two books of who did it, why they did it, what, are they really dead, are they alive, who was backstabbing somebody. So this is a t- the time to honestly bring the true culprits to the table and then kind of wrap up the series and give Eric a break so he can go chill in his own time. And actually, I really appreciated your note at the end of this book that says book three is coming in 2023. It will wrap things up because some oftentimes when you find a a new fantasy series, you just never know how many decades of your life you're going to be invested in it. So I am that person. Yeah, I'm that person that can only commit to so much. And I don't I've been with some writers that have 10, 15 books. I'm like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Okay, we need to get there. Why are you doing this to me? When it comes to my books, I want these ones to be self-contained series. So if you want to pick the intern diaries, you got five books, three novellas, check. If you want to jump to another one, you get three, check. But you don't have to read them all if you don't want to. And they all have their arc. So it has a beginning, middle, and end. And you can be like, oh, that was fun. And then you can pick something else up without making you feel like, I'm going to be here for 20 years and have no idea how this is going to end. Right. Yeah. I will never get res- resolution on this. Um, I actually kind of like that because it gives people different entry points for, for coming into the, to the world. Will you continue writing in this world? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. And one of the things that has happened is as I continue to create these characters or these stories, more or less, more characters keep popping up. Like somebody asked me if I'm planning to do a series for every single one of the other horsemen's interns. And I'm like, I never thought about it. Let's think about it and maybe question mark, question mark. So I enjoy the universe. It makes it a lot of fun to write in. And because it's already developed, picking a different location or different person is not that hard. I would imagine it's gratifying as well as an author when when people ask you questions like that about characters, when they want to know more about characters or the world that those characters are in. It's really exciting. It also adds a lot of pressure because you go and... I don't want to let you down. I really hope you like it. Oh, do we really want to go back there? So yes, I, I have writer friends who once they're finished their book, they're done with that. They don't want to go back. I'm very much attached to my characters and I like to see them popping in and out in different stories. It doesn't have to be a full novel, but I like them when they pop in and say hi and do their little mischievous and then continue on their lives. Yeah, I like that as well. I'm I'm one of those readers who is very happy if you can give me the world's lengthiest epilogue. I don't, I I just like to know what happens to all of the characters. It's fun. It gives you the satisfaction to become your family. You're like, Oh, that was exciting. And then you can move on. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about what you are working on currently? I am doing a little side project. Speaking of my Reaper crew, I have a project with a dear friend, Jamie Dalton, and we're working on, short story collections. And we decided to publish probably between three to four short story collections. The next one is coming for Halloween. So it's Tales of Halloween, as we're calling it. So we're featuring seven other authors besides us. And it's going to be all featuring shifters as well as, you know, Halloween stories and paranormal and modern fantasy. The one that I'm working on for this specific one is a tale of Bartholomew. So Bart's coming back. You get a little bit of Constantine and he's trying to save the world from a crazy group trying to wake up the god set. So I'm obsessed with Egyptian mythology. So I get to have a little play of like, what if they woke him up and Bartholomew is going to stop them? So this is a really, really fun short read for anybody who is in love with Bart. They get a little bit of more of him. Nice. And do you have a possible release date for that? This short story is going to be released and we're doing it wide so that you can get it anywhere on the 15th of October. So that's our thing. Like it needs to be released right before Halloween or not going to have nearly the impact that people think it should. So it should be a lot of fun. We are really blessed because we have a few new authors. We have a couple of season ones as well. And it's an opportunity just to do a fun collaboration that has 
very little stress. I get to play in my universe with some of my favorite characters without getting too crazy. So I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. How about um, any other writings that you would like to highlight? Maybe some of your children's books? Oh, you have perfect timing, by the way. I'm just like, oh my God, I have officially been talking to a new illustrator for book three in my Charlie collection. So Charlie's Fables, which is all dedicated to helping parents, grandparents, or anybody who has a little one share conversations with their kids and or their little ones in their family. I got nephews, so this is their collection is for them. So the next book in Charlie's Fable is Charlie and the Power of Imagination. And the goal of the books is always to kind of illustrate little traits of kids so they can think and apply different skills and techniques. So this one is all about where am I trying to get Charlie to play outside again and use his imaginations instead of his video games. So the illustrator is doing amazing. We're looking for an early 24, maybe summer 24 release for this one. She's doing amazing because I'm loving what she's sending me so far. So I'm really excited. That is exciting. When it comes to children's books, picture books, I, and, and it's a different illustrator than, you know, you have a separate author and a separate illustrator. I always wonder how hard is it to, I would imagine you need to have a really good relationship with your illustrator because for me, I would think it would be very hard to let someone else kind of bring my ideas to life. Do you ever experience that? This one is really interesting. My illustrator for the first two book happens to be my sister-in-law. So that's kind of cheating because I I love her to death as she knows how I think. For this third book, because it's a whole different person is more or less, they happen to match the style of the first two books. Like I don't want something that's so completely different that people cannot connect. So it has to still be within the same two style and still give it her own flair. So it's a little bit more detail than the other ones so you can still recognize them but they're a little bit more mature I think that's the best way to say it so it is kind of creating the story I'm great at sending it back to her getting her feedback and then we've been going back and forth to that communication in terms do you like it do you not like it what am I missing and how do we go from there Mm -hmm. makes sense Time for our final break of the podcast, but if you're at all interested in the Charlie books, you should definitely look them up. They look like they're a lot of fun, and they might be great to read with kiddos, depending on what ages you have. So let's go ahead and take our final break of the podcast. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author DC Gomez. When it comes to your your time as an author, is is being an author something that you always wanted to do? Did you start writing as a young person? Did it come later in life? How did that work for you? I always wanted to be a storyteller, not so much an author per se. I always thought I was going to be, a, probably once I got into high school, I thought I was going to be a filmmaker, I was going to be doing TV, television, series, you name it, all that stuff in films. And life kind of changes your perspective. I ended up joining the military, went through basic got in 9-11, and that focus completely changed. So I wasn't back until a few years ago where I kind of what I call everybody came back home. It was kind of that switch drastically of going from, I'm not doing anything creative. I'm not living my purpose. How do I get back to that? And writing was that tool and that venue that gave me that sense of fulfillment that sense of like okay this is what my life was missing and what I need to get back to and it gave me an opportunity to go back to telling stories and be able to create these worlds that I was missing for so long 
And from that experience, then would you have advice for people who might want to be storytellers? Maybe they might want to write. Maybe they're not sure which they want to do. One of the hardest things for anybody who's thinking about it is to get out of their own way. I don't know how many times I said I wanted to write a book. It was always, you know, I want to write a book. I'm going to start to do this. And I hear it a lot. And everybody has a book in their bucket list. But we're so hard on ourselves. We're so hard on what we think we can or not do. So getting out of our way is giving ourselves permission to do it. Because once I decided that, yes, I was going to write a book, it took me a while to give myself that permission and not be concerned about, okay, what are people going to say? Is anybody going to read it? Is it going to be good enough? The first process of it is just to write it, to be kind to yourself, to understand that it's okay if your drafts are kind of messy. It is okay to work on it. It is okay to get an editor. You don't have to do it all. But first, you have to get out of your way and be gentle and patient with yourself and enjoy the process or else the book is not going to come out. Right. It's not actually going to write itself, unfortunately. That would be amazing, but it doesn't. So yes, it does not. Uh, well, you write magic. Maybe you got to you need to you know come up with how that works. Oh, that's, that's I will make millions if I can figure out <laughs> how to like the spicy. How do I get you to write this without killing yourself and go crazy? Yes. Exactly. Um, when you take time to read for yourself, what are your favorite genres, and who are some of your favorite authors? I am very much almost like my writing. I cross genres. I can do anything from fantasy or fantasy even a whole bunch of cozy mystery i'm crazy about cozy mysteries i don't know if anybody else is so right now because time is so precious i've been doing a lot of audiobooks so anybody who's an audiobook fanatic send me a note let me know which ones are your greatest one i am crazy about audiobooks specifically fantasy ones favorite authors because i'm probably too add i think it changes which whatever the book i'm reading so lately here is Brandon Sanderson. I'm in love with his stuff. I read a Mistborn and I'm like, oh my God, thank you. I'm also doing Urban Fantasy. Kim Harris is still high on my list. So I can go back and forth. I resonate with that so much. I mean, I I love audiobooks, especially for when I'm reading when I'm reading my own personal TBR as opposed to, you know, reading for the podcast which I love um, and cozies are definitely high on my list so we'll have to compare cozy authors <laughs> at some point um, how about uh, social media and internet presence do you have a website and where can people find you on social media I do I'm excited I joke that my website is like a highway in Texas it's always under construction but it's there I promise it is up to date we're always adding new things to it so my, my website is DC Gomez G-O-M-E-Z dash author dot com. You can find links to my website. You can also find links to my social there. The fun thing about it is you can get a link to my podcast. I have a free short story on the website right now. So anybody who's interested can pick it up and kind of follow my world from there directly. And those are usually the easiest way to find me. You scared me a little bit uh, with the uh, roads in Texas comment because I lived in Texas for three years and I, I was lost the entire time I was there. Um, so, you understand <laughs> completely. I grew up with mountains and then I moved to the uh, to the Dallas area and there were no land. There were no mountains. I never knew what direction I was going. I am about two and a half hours from Dallas. I'm in Texarkana. So you understand it's like we have bridges going to nowhere and you got lines and side streets and service streets. And every single time you think you fix it, it's under construction again. So yes, yes. that's how I feel with websites. <laughs> I completely understand. And this was the early 2000s. So I was still trying to work with MapQuest, <laughs> which just did not go well. No, no, not in Texas. No. Um, well, DC, we've talked about a few different things today, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you wanted to make sure you highlighted? One of the things that I think I haven't mentioned that is coming up is I'm doing a Kickstarter project. So it's the first time I'm going to be playing on Kickstarter for anybody who's Kickstarter fanatic. I'm working on a motivational book. Every Monday, I send my newsletter a motivational quote that has become very, very popular. And my readers have asked to put it into a book. So I decided to go ahead and put this into a product that people can get and can kind of get some really goodies. So right now, I think that pre-order link for it. it should be coming up probably in a couple of weeks but the book itself the kickstarter campaign is going to start october 2nd so if anybody likes kickstarter look me up i'm looking to bring something fun give you something 
to inspire you 52 weeks out of the year with some really fun quotes. Awesome. That sounds great. And they can find that link on your website? Yes. The link is going to be on my website as soon as we get all the fun and exciting details of Kickstarter going. So yes. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. And thank you also for taking time to talk to me about the trader and the Reaper world as a whole. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I am so honored to be here. Thank you for what you do for authors and for readers and for having this podcast. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you once again to DC for joining me to talk about not only the Order's Assassin trilogy, but the Intern Diaries and her children's book and everything else that we talked about it. I really appreciate it. Of course, if you are a fan of urban fantasy, you should definitely check out this series. As I mentioned, you've got um, an almost complete trilogy. You've got a complete series with five books. You've got a whole world to explore with um, some very fun characters. Uh, as I said, Eric and Sasha, I really liked, but then there was some secondary characters that I I just thought were quirky and interesting and fun, and I very much enjoyed getting to know them and would like to explore some of the other books so that I can get to know those characters even better in different contexts. So definitely check this out if you or someone you know is a fan of urban fantasy. I hope that you will join me for the next episode. I will be joined by author... Janae Brownwood, excuse me, Janae Brownwood. Looking forward to speaking to her. So join me for that. In the meantime, as always, if you can do me a few things, if you're a fan of this podcast, if you're a supporter of this podcast, there are some things that you can do to make that support known. They're not hard. Uh, like, follow, subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to this podcast on. That will make sure that you always know when there are new episodes out. It also helps support the channel. Also, a review is really great for getting this podcast out to more listeners and book lovers. doesn't have to be complicated, but a review is very, very helpful. And then finally, you can follow the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Love hearing from listeners. So if you have not done so already, uh, follow the podcast on whatever platforms you yourself are on and hit me up with comments, questions, anecdotes, TBRs, whatever to use on your mind at any given moment. I love hearing from you. Hope you're having a great week so far. If you're having, if you had a long weekend and today is your Monday, I sympathize. Hope there's a lot of coffee in your life. Coffee and of course books. Whatever your week brings you, I hope it brings you plenty of time to get yourself lost in a great book this week. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.